This is just about multiplying functions. So we're just going to draw on there the function y equals f of x. So this is given. So given that's that function, and y equals g of x, we're going to make it look like that. So it's like y equals f of x, that's your g of x. So I've got both of these functions drawn. So f of x is this one. And g of x is this one. Okay, so now what we want to do is look at what would the resulting curve be if I multiplied these two functions. Now, what I would like you to do is you've got to think about the signs of these two functions. So you've got to think about that f of x times g of x. Now, you've got to realise that if f of x is above the x-axis, it is positive because it is a positive y value. And if any curve, f of x or g of x, this is probably both of them, if any of them are above the axis, they are positive. And if any of them are below the x-axis, they are negative. So what that actually means then is that when, you, when you're looking at these um, and you're trying to figure out when you multiply them, is the result going to be positive or negative? If, if you have, you've got to look at things like if you have a negative times a negative, you'll end up with a positive, and that will be above the x-axis. See, this is a negative. A negative would be below the x-axis times another graph that is below the x-axis. When you do that, the resulting curve would be above the x-axis. If you have um, a positive times a positive, that means that you've got one that is above the x-axis times above the x-axis, and two positives means it will be above the x-axis, so that's positive. If you've got opposite signs like one above, one below, then a positive times a negative is a negative, so that means if you have one above and one below, when you multiply them, they end up being a negative, which means that they'll end up below the x-axis. So how does this affect you when you're actually sketching these? If you look at these two here, it's really important. That one other property besides that is also when you multiply by zero. So if you do g of x times zero, you get zero. And if you do zero times f of x, you get zero. Okay, so anywhere where there are x-intercepts will stay the same because that's like zero times this y value. And this is zero times this y value. And this one here is zero times that y value. So you end up with zero. So the first thing you need to do is the x-intercepts um, put a point there. Then what you need to do is look at the curves left and right of that point. So even if you got like a dotted line and you dotted through all of those, and you put it into regions, you can see that the, the thing that's important here is this curve, the f of x is above here and this one's below. So that's positive times a negative. That will end up being a negative. So if you shade in the region where that graph should be, it should be there. And then if you look at the next one, so this is, you look at this one here, this is a negative, and this one's a negative because they're both below the x-axis. So when you do a negative times a negative, you get a positive. So that means in that region, the resulting graph will be up here. And then when you do the next one, what have we got? We've got a positive because it's above and a negative because it's below. So when you do a positive times a negative, you end up with a negative, so it's down there. And when you get to the last section, you have a positive and a positive, and when you multiply two positives, you end up with a positive. So when you go to draw this resulting curve, I'm gonna draw it really thick so we can see it. It's gonna start down here, oops, sorry, thick, and I'll make it, what will we make it? Red, maybe. Start down here, go through that dot, 
up here, it doesn't matter how high up it is because you can't get the actual values, it's just a basic sketch. Down in this region, back through here and up here, and that curve there would be your y equals f of x and times g of x. So just to run through on what we're doing, when you've got your two curves sketched, you need to find, when you're trying to draw f of x, g of x, you need to find the x-intercepts and you need to put a point there, like a dot there. Then you need to put dotted lines. So you put dotted lines to put into regions. Once you put it into its separate regions, the next thing that you would need to do is you need to look whether the um, curve is above, is the curve above the x-axis, that would mean that it would be a positive y value, and or is it, so it's a, if it's below the x-axis, that would be a negative. And then you need to shade in the resulting region when you actually multiply the two graphs. Okay, so if you go, if you're doing g of x times f of x, you're interested whether that is a positive times a negative, that's is it above times below, because the region that you will shade in, that will end up being negative. So you'll shade in below the x-axis for the, uh, well, something like that. So something like that, if you've got one that's above and then you've got one that's below, so here, so when you're doing that, you'll have one here. Oh, sorry, that's not going to be there. Um, let's just draw a dotted line here through the middle. So when you go to do that, um, that purple, the purple's not going to be there. I've just got to get rid of it. Okay. So um, let's just draw the dotted line through. And when we go to shade here, because that's a positive above, it'll be a negative, that will be a positive, that's a positive, and that's a negative. A positive and negative is a negative. This one is negative, positive, so that one turns out being above, so here. So when you go to draw your resulting curve, your resulting curve actually ends up being, like there's the point here, and your resulting curve ends up being like somewhere here, and somewhere there. So that's like g of x times f of x. So you're just working out, is it positive or negative above or below? So like if you did a positive times a positive, it ends up being above the x-axis, that you shade. If it is a negative times a negative, that equals a positive. So that one will be above the x-axis. And then if you get two opposite signs, like a negative times a positive, that's a negative. So that one also will be below the x-axis. So just one more example. Uh, let's go, we'll make that, that's f of x. And now we'll just draw g of x. So let's just say that was g of x. Um, all right, so that's g of x. Okay, so now let's draw f of x times g of x. So when I'm drawing that, I dot at the x-intercepts and that curve's going to go through that, but I also draw asymptotes there. And then you go, okay, this here, this is negative and a negative, so a negative and a negative means that it should be up here. Okay, and then you come to here, this is a negative and a positive, so a negative and a positive will be a negative, so it ends up being down here. Negative, positive. And when I go to do the last, this one here, the next one, that one is a positive and a negative, so it ends up being a negative, so it also has to come down here. Because a positive times a negative is a negative. This one here is a positive and a positive, so two positives together will mean that it shades up here. So then your resulting curve, you can now see where it goes. Let's do it in red. So it's got to go through these dots. So it'll go here, down here, down there, and then back through there, and that would be your 
f of x times g of x. That will be your resulting function.